Today we're making one of my favorite recipes from this year, Greek yogurt biscuits. As the name implies, this is a mixture of all-purpose flour and Greek yogurt and a few other ingredients. If you've tried two ingredient dough or bagels or pizza crust, it's going to be a riff on that. I'm going to show you exactly how I make it. So this is using a food scale. If you don't have a food scale, highly recommend getting one, especially if you do a lot of baking, uh, just for precision's sake. If you don't have a food scale, I have all the measurements here. You can use that just fine. But this may look like a lot of stuff, but I'm going to touch on a few alternatives, things to know. The original recipe I mixed in a stand mixer, uh, but we'll get to that and we'll do a little troubleshooting how you might be over mixing dough if your biscuits don't come out nice and fluffy and things like that. If you can see the tape measure over here, we're going to get real precise. We're going to give you measurements, how long the dough should be when we're finished, how thick it should be before it goes in the oven and all that good stuff. So let's just jump right in. Like I said, this is exactly how I would make it and how I make it every time. So we got our food scale on uh, and we're going to start out with all purpose flour going uh, one and a half cups or 180 grams. Now, if you're measuring this, you know, we'll want to get as closely as possible. You can see I, I measure here uh, very precisely with a protein powder scoop. So we'll go 180 grams. So one reason I really love, I've already touched on precision, uh, the reason I love using a food scale is we just know exactly uh, what we've got in there. We don't have to worry about leveling off measuring cups and then you know we just get consistent results every time. So with our sugar here, now this is kind of an important point. This is Swerve Granular, uh, which is a granulated sugar substitute. This measures one for one like sugar or substitutes one for one just like granulated sugar. Uh, but the difference between this and some other alternatives is the weight. So if you were to measure this um, using like a tablespoon, this would be, let's see how close we can get here. Pretty spot on. Uh, 12 grams per tablespoon. So the recipe calls for 24 grams. If you use something like stevia, uh, Splenda, or sucralose, if you measure out two tablespoons, your weight might actually be something like um, five grams, eight grams. If they're really light, uh, it, it doesn't make or break a recipe, but if you have issues, like if you make these biscuits and something just seems off, like they're not fluffy or they're a little tough, or you have trouble getting the dough to, get, to come together, or like when you add all your, your wet ingredients, the dough's kind of sticky, uh, it could be this is probably a big, uh, big factor there. So we're going 24 grams or two tablespoons here. And then we've got salt and baking powder. So these are two big ones. Baking powder, make sure you have something that's active if this has been open and just sitting in your pantry for a year. You probably want to get some fresh baking powder uh, just so that we actually get that leavening effect uh, and we get some rise in our biscuits. So we're going here half a tablespoon. I think this could be a common error with this recipe because we use a half teaspoon of salt and a half tablespoon of baking powder. So if you only use a half teaspoon accidentally of baking powder, you're not going to get much rise here. And then if you use a half tablespoon of salt, you have some seriously salty biscuits. So half tablespoon. I will use a measuring spoon for this uh, just because you know, sometimes scales can be a little sensitive and if you're only measuring like a few grams, uh, unless you have like a really precise scale, you could have some issues there. So we'll measure that out. That's our baking powder. And then we'll use salt. I'm using kosher salt. If you have just table salt, so you know, like the finer textured, you might want to cut this in half to a fourth teaspoon instead of a full half teaspoon. And again, I'll actually measure this with a spoon. With baking, you know, if I'm cooking something, just, you know, stir fries, whatever, I uh, might just go with a pinch there. Precision isn't all that important. But with baked goods, you know, let's be as precise as we can. Okay, so that's all our dry ingredients here. We're just going to give those a good mix. I'm using a fork here, very fancy. Like I mentioned earlier, the original recipe used a stand mixer. You can use a food processor. They all work. Uh, but you do run the risk of over mixing with that. I'll show you what this dough should look like kind of as we bring it all together. So we'll give those just a quick mix. You don't have to get super crazy here. We're going back on the food scale. 
and then we'll incorporate our butter here. So I'm using a light butter with canola. You can use really anything you want. This has 50 calories per tablespoon. If you use real butter, probably going to turn out just fine. If you use um, margarine, probably just going to turn out totally fine. Uh, I can't believe it's not butter. Really, I think the butter here, we're only using two tablespoons, so you'll probably get away with, with lots of alternatives here. Uh, so we're going two tablespoons, 28 grams, almost nailed it. Okay, so you can see this butter is very soft at room temperature. Uh, like it, it just almost, you know, completely creams here just with a little fluff. If you're using real butter, this is going to be a little bit uh, tougher to, to mix in. You might want to use like a pastry uh, blender or something like that. So we're just going to kind of cut this in. So you can see just um, we're pressing down with the fork here, we're creating some little uh, clumps. You can see there kind of looks like, you know, clumpy sand. We'll just work this together. When you can no longer see any like visible pieces of butter or any large chunks, you're good to go. So we'll make sure we get as much of that off as possible. And it's time to add our Greek yogurt. I'm going to use the same fork here uh, because I have an almost empty tub of Greek yogurt. If you're scooping out of a full tub of Greek yogurt, don't use your spoon with, with flour and everything on it. Okay, we're going three-fourths cup, 170 grams here. I'm using Chobani. I imagine, you know, every Greek yogurt is a little bit different. I don't think you'll have that many, uh, that, that big of a difference using another Greek yogurt, but you never know. So, you know, keeping it as consistent as possible is always gonna make the best recipe. So we've got 170 grams, and now, we're done with our ingredients. We just have to mix this up. So you could take it to this step, throw it in a stand mixer, food processor. Again, uh, I'll show you what it, what we want it to look like before we bring the dough uh, onto the board here and start forming our biscuits. So if you can see this, uh, we have quite a bit of dry flour remaining and kind of just some big uh, big chunks here and this is when we're going to dump this out so it's definitely not we're not mixing this until there's no dry flour remaining what happens if we're using like a wheat flour like all-purpose flour is that gluten will really develop and that's when you end up with like tough biscuits or biscuits that don't rise at all if you got all your ingredients right so we're going to dump this out and now we're just going to use our hands so we're going to press this together, kind of knead this dough. Shouldn't require much work at all. If your dough, again, like if you use different ingredients and your dough is very sticky, you can spray your hands with a little bit of cooking spray, kind of rub that in and that'll prevent, you know, just super sticky dough all over your fingers. As you can see, we, all I did there, press that together and then we've already incorporated most of that remaining dry flour. And we're kind of flipping the dough, so I'll press this out. Make sure any dry bits are kind of pressed in, incorporated here, and then flip it over. If there's any dry bits left, you know, you can kind of like bring those in. We'll keep working that together. You can fold it over. And then we can form this into kind of like a ball of dough. You can use it to pick up any remaining uh, flour here that's on the, on the board. You don't have to worry about every little drop. So. There we go, we have our dough. Uh, if you have any bits left on your hand, you can kind of rub these together. Uh, and then the dough itself should help you kind of pick up any stragglers there. Okay, so it's time to form biscuits. We're gonna go straight down on the board. And we're just gonna use our hands again, press this out into a, uh, a rectangle. Again, I've got my tape measure over here, so we'll get measurements. Uh, you can see you know, exactly how big you need to make this. Okay, so the dough is a little sticky. I'll probably let my ingredients sit out for just a little bit. So I'm gonna need a tiny bit of cooking spray. That'll really help me out. So sprayed the hands, and that's gonna be so much easier to form this. We'll kind of round those edges. You don't have to have a perfectly uh, symmetrical rectangle here with like squared edges. Rounded edges are just fine. These biscuits are a little bit like squares anyway. If you wanted to make circular biscuits, you take a biscuit cutter, cut those out, and then kind of reform your dough, cut your extra biscuits. 
Um, this looks about right to me. Be sure like your center, you don't want your center to be super tall and then kind of like level out at the edges. So make sure you know, you're pretty even across, across the board here. My tape measure, just looking at from end to end. Now this looks like about nine inches. And then height wise, maybe um, close to a half inch, something like that. Close enough. And then we're going to cut this into six pieces and then we'll brush our eggs on and we're ready to bake. Uh, before you brush your eggs on, you might, just so it's easier to handle, cut this, transfer it to your baking sheet and then you just do your egg wash. Okay. You can measure this when you cut if you want to. So you have perfectly uh, like the same size or close to the same size biscuits. I'm just gonna eyeball it here. Okay, and there we go. If you want, you can, uh, these the end pieces, you can kind of form those if you want to where they're more uh, you know, square, like your other, like your center biscuits. Or you can leave them kind of in this triangle shape, whatever you want to do. If you do squares, it'll make them a little bit taller. So, there you go. So we kind of squared them in a little bit and then we'll press down just a tiny bit to where they're about the same thickness as those two center pieces. So I'm gonna transfer to these to the baking sheet. We'll do our egg wash and then we bake. Okay, so I've added just a tiny bit of cooking spray here just to prevent any sticking. We'll transfer over. If you wanted to double this recipe, uh, just be sure that you're not crowding them too much. They're not gonna expand much. They'll rise more than they kind of expand, uh, but you don't wanna crowd them too much. Like as, but as long as there's some separation, you'll be, you'll be fine. So let's go egg wash. We just got one egg. We're gonna do an egg yolk wash. So separate the yolks from the white. Um, you can use any, really anything you want here. You don't have to brush them with anything, but if you don't, they'll be a little pale, uh, which is fine but I like golden brown tops. So an egg yolk does really well. You can use a little bit of butter, a little bit of butter mixed with honey or even some sugar. That sugar will really uh, create some caramelization. You get some great color on top of these, uh, but we'll choose an egg yolk. Okay, so I have a little brush here that's like for um, brushing meats. If you don't have a brush, you can just use your fork, no big deal. So we got that on. You don't have to worry about brushing around the sides entirely. We will we'll use most of the egg yolk on the top and we're good to go. So I'm gonna throw these in the oven and we'll see them when they come out. Okay, so our biscuits just came out of the oven. This was after about 18 minutes. Uh, that's pretty warm. Uh, but you can see we got some nice rise here. They're not gonna be just massively tall uh, scone like biscuits, but there definitely should be some rise. Um, yeah, you can see here, I'm gonna cut into one. Ah, we'll let these cool down a little bit first. You can see that. You got nice aeration here. These are not rocks. So that's what you're looking for, right there. Pretty nice, right? <laughs> um, troubleshooting. I've mentioned a few things. Some of the biggest will be granulated sugar. Be sure you get one that, that not only swaps one for one with sugar, but is essentially the same weight. You don't want to use a super concentrated sweetener. A few people have tried this recipe and asked if they should be sweet. Not at all. So you shouldn't taste the sugar at all. Uh, these should be buttery, kind of buttermilk tasting biscuits because you get that acidity from the Greek yogurt just like you would real buttermilk uh, and so they taste almost like buttermilk biscuits. Um, baking powder, use fresh, use the half tablespoon not a half teaspoon. If you've got all your ingredients right uh, and they don't rise or they're tough or rubbery, my guess would be over mixing but now that you've seen what it should look like, so still some dry flour left in the mixing bowl not completely incorporated. Uh, don't overwork it. So when you're forming that rectangle before we cut our biscuits, you know, we don't need to sit here and just knead that and let that gluten super develop. Um, you know, we just need it to come together enough to hold to where we cut it and, you know, separate each piece 
do the egg yolk wash or any kind of wash we want. And I think that's it. Troubleshooting wise, if you have other questions that I haven't covered here or this video, you watch this video in its entirety and you make these and they still don't turn out, I can't think of anything else. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that's it. All that being said, you should be good to go. I'll link the full recipe. It's got all the amounts, some substitution questions like can you use almond flour or other types of flour, um, Greek yogurt, butter questions, things like that. And I'll link the, uh, the sausage gravy, uh, chicken breakfast sausage, some stuff you can pair this with. Uh, I'll link that down below or somewhere around here. And that's it. Hope you enjoy these. Let me know if you give them a try. And like I said, if you try it all and it still doesn't work, don't let me know. <laughs>